This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so what are we going to discuss today? We already understood yesterday that we will be starting with SAP Activate today. Okay. Now, have you heard about SAP Activate? Any idea what exactly is SAP Activate? It is a methodology to which will same as like uh, a SAP methodology. It is some something changed from SAP. So it is a new methodology, right? A uh, new methodology which will replace SAP SAP and SAP launch. So for some time, SAP also came up with SAP launch methodology for the cloud based products. So that will get replaced and now the new methodology would be SAP activate. OK, what else do you know about SAP activate? What has been changed? Any idea? Why there is a need to change? Why not uh, use SAP SAP? The guided configuration is part of SAP Activate, I believe. Uh, yes, so SAP Activate actually consists of three parts. SAP Activate, maybe I should write this before this because then the methodology will come into the picture. So SAP Activate, in official terms, in SAP terms, it is called as SAP Activate has three pillars. Three pillars of SAP Activate. Uh, number one is uh, the guide, uh, sorry, the methodology. It is a methodology, first of all, which is going to replace uh, SAP SAP and SAP launch. Second is it is providing the based business practices. And number three is what you said is guided configuration. So when we talk about SAP activate it comes in three with three different pillars. Number one is methodology itself. Number two is base business practices and number three is guided configuration. Okay, and then when we talk about the methodology, it is a new methodology which will replace SAP SAP and SAP launch. Okay, anything else what has been incorporated in this methodology? What has been incorporated in this new methodology? You heard about agile. It is agile methodology. It is not a waterfall anymore and all those things. It uses the concept of scrum master agile. We heard about all these things modular methodology. OK, so it is a. Modular. Approach. Using the concepts of. Agile using the concept of scrum and also using the concepts of PMP. OK, so what is happening is uh, you know that in the industry, whenever we talk about the software development, these new terminologies are becoming very common. Agile, scrum, even from the project management point of view, PMP, Prince2. So what is happening is in the methodology itself, SAP is trying to bring the concepts of all these new technologies. OK, so what will happen is. Earlier what used to happen is we when we were implementing the SAP projects. If you are following SAP asset methodology, normally it was a waterfall model. OK, slowly I'll come to that slide where I'll be explaining you why I'm saying it was a waterfall model. But now with the SAP activate it follows the agile model. Agile model means you don't need to do all the things at once. You can take the modular approach. You can do step by step. OK, so first you complete this process. Once that is completed, everything is done. Then you start the new process. So instead of doing Big Bang, instead of doing all the things together, let's do it in face by face approach, modular approach. OK, so that is agile. So complete one activity, do the complete testing. Everything is signed off, then go for the second process instead of doing all the things together. Right, we'll talk about that. So this is another important benefit of SAP Activate that it is modular approach. One more thing that you need to know is 
this is going to be it, it supports all different deployment options so irrespective of whether you are implementing a cloud or you are implementing on premise or a hybrid combination sap activate is going to be followed okay so sap recommends whenever you are implementing sap as for hana irrespective of whether you are going for the cloud solution or you are going for on premise you should use sap activate methodology also it is used in all the adoption options now what are adoption options adoption options means when you are going for the new implementation okay adoption options means the ways in which customers can adopt sap s4 hana okay so if it is a new customer you will go for the new implementation project if it is a customer who is already using sap from last few years this customer can go for the system conversion which means the upgradation instead of starting from scratch he will just upgrade his system so that is called as system conversion and then there is a third type of adoption option which is called as landscape transformation okay so central finance is an example of landscape transformation okay which is also called as selective data conversion okay we will discuss about all these things in detail i'll show you the complete uh, i'll do the complete explanation of when to go for the new implementation when to go for the system conversion and when to go for the landscape transformation and what are the differences in all these things so when you're talking about sap activate just remember that it has three pillars it is methodology first of all then it provides the base business practices and then it also provides the guided configuration what is guided configuration we will discuss in detail right similarly when we talk about the methodology itself it is a new methodology which will replace so no more sap no more launch sap is not recommending to use sap or launch methodology anymore also instead of following the waterfall model instead of following the big bang approach you should go in the modular approach where you'll be using the concept of agile scrum and pmp okay and irrespective of whether you are implementing cloud solution or you are implementing sap s4 hana on premise you can use sap activate for all the different deployment options finally irrespective of whether you are implementing the new system or you are converting the existing system or you are going for the selective data conversion again in all these scenarios sap activate would be helpful okay so now before we go in the methodology in detail we need to understand all three things in this yeah, I have one i have one question uh, yes. sap activate uh, how we will know that this is the best practice or this is the guided how we will know this is the best practice no, no, I'll, I'll come to that mesh. Don't worry. So okay. I'll explain one by one. So first I will start with the methodology itself. First I will explain you the complete methodology. Then I will explain you what is the base practices. Then I'll come to the guided configuration. Okay. Okay. So the first thing let's talk about the methodology itself. Now, if you want to understand the methodology in detail, we need to compare this methodology with SAP SF. So can you tell me what are the challenges? See, we are using SAP SF from last many years. Can you, with your experience, can you tell me what are the challenges that you faced in SAP SF methodology due to which you were thinking, okay, this is not a good methodology. Maybe we need something else. Anything that you think that could be improved in SAP SF? Anyone wants to answer this? Okay, let's let's start from scratch. So what are the different phases in SF? Instead of that, maybe I will write this complete slide on SF itself. So what are the different uh, phases that you have in SF methodology? Project preparation. It starts with the project preparation. 
बिजनेस ब्लूप्रिंट बिजनेस ब्लूप्रिंट रियलाइजेशन यस रियलाइजेशन फाइनल प्रिपरेशन राइट इट इज फाइनल प्रिपरेशन गो लाइव एंड सपोर्ट go live and support so these are the five phases that we had in sap sap methodology so can you tell me what are the activities that you carry out in each phase what do you do in the project preparation project preparation a team will be formed and okay. uh, the scope of the project is determined project team finalization scope of the project okay including the project charter project kick off right yes so all these activities are mainly related to management nothing to do with consultant right yeah okay so what do you do in the blueprint then as is sent to be document okay so in business blueprint we start with as is and we do to be okay so how do you gather the requirement as is means you are gathering the requirement you are trying to understand their current business process right yes so now let's assume this customer is using tally till now Okay, this customer was using Tally, or this customer was using maybe any traditional SAP. Sorry, not SAP. Any traditional ERP system. Like maybe he's using Oracle, maybe he's using Microsoft, and now he wants to convert to SAP. So how will you go about gathering the ASIS? How do you gather the ASIS document? Firstly, we ask for the uh, business document from the client. whatever they are currently following okay uh yeah vikram we, we we meet the business smes like the experts who do this business process day in day out like they know the details so the, we, we we meet them we take the documents from them we understand the business process which is as the documentation is. business process is related to current system current system okay so if let's say if this project this complete project implementation project is one year project how much time do we take for as is if the assumption is total project is one year project how much time do you need to perform the as is maybe 2 to 3 months to 3 months to come up with to be or just for as is uh should be with to be although, although although there is no right or wrong answer here but let's assume what you said is let's say 2.5 months so 2.5 months you are spending just to understand their business right yes is it is it adding any value to the customer the time that you are spending to understand their system maybe they are using tally maybe they are using oracle maybe they are using microsoft so you are just trying to understand their process without telling them how sap works you are just understanding their process the customer is not getting any productivity out of this time is it correct statement yes yes correct right so correct. this is a big challenge we are wasting how much time around let's say 20% of time we are wasting around 20% of the time just in understanding their business without telling them what exactly is sap how exactly sap works and that is a major issue right why not we utilize this time in some of the productive activities rather than understanding their business process understanding their system that they are not going to use in future hmm. right instead yeah. of them why not we tell them how sap works and let them come let them compare whether the sap system meets their requirement or not right what was happening is let's let's first identify the issues and then we will discuss about these things in detail 
So you are right. So if you are getting around two to five months, sorry, 2.5 months, which is around 20% of the time in as is. And now you came with to be document. Okay, so you already understood what is the challenge with as is. Let's talk about to be now. So in to be document, what exactly you write? How it should be done in SAP. SAP. How it should be done in SAP. So you will enter the SAP technical terms into it. You will enter company code. You will enter business area. You will enter segment. You will be enter profit center, cost center, GL accounts, document types, posting keys, lot of technical terms, right? Now customer was using tally earlier. For him, he is not able to understand what is company code. What is the difference between company and company code? In SAP, what is the different business? Uh, what is the different business between business area and segment? Is it common in the projects? When you submit the to be document, are they able to understand each and everything in the document, customers? No, no, not, no, they are not. They are, they are not comfortable with these new terms, <clears throat> and that is the reason how much time they take to sign the document. Yeah. You need to do a lot of you need to have a lot of workshops with them, right? Once you submit the business blueprint document, they will ask you that we are not able to understand some terms. Can we have a meeting where you can explain us how these things will work? And you will explain those things again in the PowerPoints, right? What is a business blue? Sorry, what is a business area? What is a yes. segment? Because at this level, nowhere in SF methodology it is written that you show the system to the client. So if you are following SAP methodology, there is no system in place before realization, right? Yes, right. yes. So <laughs> all these discussions, what is happening is all these discussions are not without the system discussion. All these discussions are theoretical discussions which are not adding any value because customer is not able to get the real feel, look and feel of the system. And that is the reason what happens later on is when you complete the realization, maybe to be you submitted the document, you had the lot of workshops. It has definitely generated the project, but finally customer has said, okay, let's sign. We will see later on. So they have signed. You completed the realization. Again, you took two months to realize. <coughs> now tell me during the realization, what is the customer's involvement? Nothing. When you are doing the configuration, when you are doing the developments wow. at that time, how much is a customer involved in the project? Nothing. Nothing. It's very minimal. Right. It, is, it is completely client. Sorry, it is completely customer. consulting company or consultants who are doing the realization, who are doing the uh, developments, right? So at this point, user is not involved at all, and that is where the surprises <laughs> comes in the final preparation. When they go for UAT, now let's assume out of this one year of project. The UAT is only coming after seven months, right? We are yes. only left with five months now, and there are a lot of surprises mm -hmm. in UAT. Customer will say, I never seen this. Uh, I was never expecting this. But you will say, no, we have written in the business blueprint you signed. He will say, I never understood the business blueprint. <laughs> right? These are the things which are very common. <laughs> These are absolutely <clears throat> and every project. Right? So what can be done to avoid this? What can be done to make sure that user is involved on day to day basis? It is not like for two months user is not involved at all. OK, at the same time, we should concentrate on those activities which are productive for SAP rather than understanding their current business process and discussing theoretical things with the customer. Why not discuss everything by showing the system to them, making them understand how SAP works the entire end to end process? And let them come and tell us whether it is fitting their requirement or not. So in SAP Activate, we are not going to waste our time in understanding their business process. Maybe sometimes if customer is not able to explain us what he is expecting, what he is not able to achieve in SAP, maybe some of the one or two scenarios we can, uh, in order to understand it better, we can see in the system, but there is no need to see end to end process of the customer, how they are following, creating the document and then coming up with to be again theoretical document, right? Instead of that, in SAP Activate, from day one, SAP is proposing to show the system to the client. 
okay now the question is which system normally in sap the system only comes during the realization phase but in case of sap activate as i told you the system should be made available from day one when the consultant is starting the project right so there will be different workshops that you need to conduct these workshops are called as fit gap analysis workshops okay so in this fit gap analysis workshops you will be showing end to end scenarios to the customer now again you will ask a question how can i show the scenarios before i show the scenarios i need to do lot of configurations in the system i need to set up so that nothing goes wrong in front of the customer right that is again a big task yes. so sap says don't worry because not only methodology sap has also provided the best practice system where all the configurations are already done master data is also created you just go and create the transactions and that too using sap fiori okay it is up to you whether you want to use fiori or you want to use traditional gui but sap has given you that much flexibility that you don't need to waste your time in setting up the activities for each client creating a demo system all those things are not required okay so sap also provides the uh, trial versions which can be brought by the customer okay and in that trial version you can activate the best practices based on different countries so for example if you are implementing sap as for hana in us you will implement the best practices for us which will already have the configuration data which is already having the master data you just need to go in front of the customer and execute a particular end to end scenario again if another question comes to your mind i am also new to s4 hana how can i show the customer the end to end scenario is there any place where i can go and see what exactly are the scenarios that i need to execute what is the flow of the scenarios so again sap says yes they have provided the documentations so sap provided the best practice documentations in which each and everything is explained in detail i think yesterday we discussed that right best practice explorer so you can download that word document in the word document each and everything where exactly the process will start where exactly the process will end what are the roles that you need to assign to the end user all those things which company code you are going to use which transactions you are going to post which master data you are going to use everything is provided in the best practices which means with the combination of the best practices and the sandbox server which you are going to get as a trial version you don't need to waste your time in understanding their business process from day one you start showing them how sap works and this type of workshops where you will be inviting the participants from different areas so for example you started the project and in the project the first thing that you want to explain to your customers is how the general ledger accounting works so what you will do is you will invite all those uh, all those uh, users who are actually part of the general ledger accounting and in that meeting you will show them end to end process on general ledger accounting and it is their responsibility it is not your responsibility it is their responsibility to tell you that if they are okay with this end to end process or they are expecting something more which is not possible in sap in the best practices right so if you are showing them the process let's say you are telling them how to create a gl account as soon as you created a gl account you will ask them this is how in sap you create a gl account these are the different fields which are available do you think this is fitting your requirements or not if they say yes no need to do anything just say fit okay so this particular process is fit to the organization so we will implement as it is but if they say no there are more fields which we want to add there are some new more fields which we need in the gl account or maybe the process is different we need one level of approval once the user creates the gl account we need one level of approval so that is you will highlight as of now as a gap so fit means whatever is the standard best practices customer is okay with that gap means customer is deviating from the best practices again for gap you need to identify whether it is possible to do small configuration and adopt those things or you need to do the development 
okay so for gaps you need to identify the solution but for fits you don't need to do anything else so out of 100% of the functionalities if 60% are fit only 40% are gap so this fit things can be implemented in less than one month itself why to wait for 12 months those functionalities which are already fit we can ask the customer okay we will simultaneously work on the 40% gaps but at least whatever are fit you can start using it in the next month itself that is called as a modular approach we don't want to wait till all the 100% of the functionalities are developed we can ask the customer whatever is already set at least start using it okay at least you will start running the sap system uh, but yes, uh, vikram uh, this devendra uh, i have a small question like you are saying that uh, uh, if we have identified this a fit uh, approach so we can directly go and implement once a uh, customer approves it but what happens right. if, if any of the uh, fit or the gap or uh, gap thing which we are dependent on each other then in that case how to go how to uh, tell customer okay like or how to uh, make a decision okay this can be done or not no exactly so that, that is where that is our expertise will come place right so for example if yeah. you think that one process is dependent on other so till the time the second process is not getting developed you cannot implement the first process so that particular process can be skipped in the first modular approach so whatever is fit you can implement that whatever is not fit if you think that whatever is fit is not enough you cannot go ahead only with this changes so then maybe whatever are the mandatory things to develop wait for that okay. and then go for the first approach then go for the first phase okay okay right oh, but I was again, just thinking... you don't need to wait till 100% is completed see normally what we do in the normal implementation approach is we get all the requirements and we take one year of time one and a half year of time because we want to develop all the things and we want to do the big bang go lab right one go. right yeah in this case SAP is recommending don't do that because what will happen unnecessarily is you will not be able to realize whatever things are fitting your requirements for next one year in that case. At least whatever things are fit, go ahead with that and then slowly keep on upgrading your system. Right, got it. <clears throat> but all this will be done in uh, production system, Garo. No, no, you have the quality development, quality production, same as ECC, same as uh, the no, older one. No, the one, the one you said, uh, it will be released to the customer to start using. So that will be mm -hmm. in production itself. Yes. So if it's the right. customer is happy with 60% of the requirements, we will definitely start developing in the development. We'll move to the quality. And once this 60% of the things are ready, we can give it to the customer on the production itself. Uh -huh. How about the legacy data again? So legacy data, anyways, you have to transfer in the first approach itself. See, let me let me give you the example. Let's talk about one process. Okay, let's talk about one single process. Let's talk about AP. Now in AP, customer is happy with the process of vendor creation. He's saying, okay. No problem. Everything is fine. The way in which the vendor is created in SAP as for HANA, I will go ahead as the best practices. He is happy with the invoice payment. Sorry, invoice processing. He is happy with the payment processing also. Okay. The only problem is in down payments, he wants some additional things. Okay. He wants to make some adjustments in the down payments. So what we can tell the customer for some time being go ahead with the standard based practices so as of now we will continue to develop whatever you are looking for the down payments but till that time can you just follow the base practices and do the down payments in the same way as it is recommended by sap okay at least just for down payments you don't need to wait for all other things right now definitely if you are going for ap in the production system whatever the legacy data you definitely need to migrate that otherwise how will you able to process this all other things in the system 
Are you getting it? Yes, yes. But there is uh, some issues. Let's suppose they want to do something in purchase. Well, let's suppose if they procure to pay cycle, there is something he required in MM process, procurement process. But if mm -hmm. this is missing, it is not implemented. We are implementing the payment process. So mm -hmm. maybe user will not agree. In my case, in, in our customer case, they will in, in small, small changes, they are not agree. No, see, the thing is, we need all the told you, as I told you, if there is a dependency of one process on another process, then definitely we may need to wait. Right. And again, the thing is, this is a very new process. We all know this SAP activate is a very new process. And to be very frank, as of today, there is not much awareness about this activate methodology. Also, most of the companies Although they are saying we are following the new methodology, but if you go and work on the projects, they are working on the same SF methodology till today. So it will definitely take time. Okay, so even today also there is not much awareness. Actually, my network, my network is break. Uh, some from AP, na? Please. Sorry, sorry. Can you come again? No, no. My network is break for two minutes. Now it is resumed. Now. Ah, yes, yes. Now it is clear. So I'm saying uh, it totally depends upon the customer and it totally depends upon the company who is implementing this product. OK, so definitely, uh, although this is recommended by SAP that you follow this methodology and don't wait for uh, this functionalities to uh, complete it and then only go for S4 HANA. But again, if a customer is reluctant, no, this is important. Without this, I cannot go to S4 HANA if the customer is not agreeing then definitely we cannot do anything on that. So we have to wait till the time that particular functionality is developed. And definitely it will take time to mature this particular understanding for the customer also, because customers are still thinking if we get everything, then only we'll go for S4 HANA. But slowly, when they understand that uh, they will be able to at least use some of the functionalities in the production system, definitely the customers will start going through partial functionalities now and they will keep on improving their system on the regular basis. But that is something which is recommended by SAP. So if customer yeah. is agreeing or not, that depends upon the customer. We cannot do anything on that. But yes, okay. it is practically possible and SAP is recommending don't wait like the big bang. Just go ahead with whatever you have today and slowly keep on improving your system. OK. OK, so what we discussed is let me just write one separate this one challenges in SAP SF so that we can understand how SAP as activate will solve those challenges. So number one, we spend too much time in understanding their current business process or their current business systems which are not going to be used in future right number two customer during the business blueprint sign off has no look and feel for actual system. Also, customer is not involved during development phase. Development phase means realization phase. Customer is only involved once the development has been completed. After this many number of, after this much effort during development, when customer sees the system,
he may not agree or maybe there are a lot of surprises due to which there is a lot of rework. This is very common. Also, SF follows Big Bang approach where most of the things are deployed. Deployed means you are going live. So maybe we can say go live at once when most of the things are ready. Right? So these are some of the challenges due to which the entire process. I think I'm not able to add any point. So let's try to. Due to which due to above things. Project takes longer time. And this very critical for the customer because he has already invested the amount and he is just waiting that I'll be able to realize the benefits. So more time required to realize the benefit. Okay, so in this case, in case of SAP Activate, at least if not 100% of the benefit, if you get 40% initially, then 60%, then 80%, then 100%. So at least you are getting some benefit out of the investment that you have made. Right? That is a big thing within SAP Activate. So now let's go to the SAP Activate. How it is better? In SAP Activate, if I talk about the methodology, the methodology is there are five phases again. In SAP Activate also, there are five phases. Almost same as in SF methodology, but the activities within the phases are simplified. Okay, so if I talk about the first phase, it is prepare phase. Similar to initial preparation that we had in SF. Okay, so most of the activities are same. There is one additional activity to arrange okay this is additional activity in addition to what activities we were doing in the preparation phase in SF additional activity is to arrange the demo server for carrying out the workshops which is called a system provisioning Okay, so first is prepare. Second is explore. Okay, explore is actually from the output point of view, it is same as business blueprint. What is the output of the business blueprint? You will get a clear idea what we need to do. Right? In the explore phase also, ultimately you will get an idea that what are we supposed to do in order to make the system ready. But instead of business blueprint, it is called as instead of BBP, this is called as validation workshops. What do you mean by validation workshops? Validation workshops means you are conducting the workshops where you are using this demo server and you are showing them how SAP works and why you are doing this demo to validate the system to validate whether the SAP standard best practices are sufficing the business requirements or not. So you are validating your system with the user requirements, right? That is the reason it is called as validation workshops. So you will be carrying out validation workshops during the explore phase. The output would be this workshops are also called as fit gap workshops. Fit gap workshops. 
why it are fit gap workshops because at the end of the workshop you will get a clear idea what are the business processes which are fitting into the business requirements and what are the business processes which are not fitting in the business requirements of the customer right and how are you going to carry out this explore phase as i told you you will be using the demo system and you will be using the best practice documentations which are available from sap so let me show you one test script okay which you will be using in order to show or in order to carry out this fit gap analysis workshop just give me a minute let me open that word file in time if you have any question you can go ahead sorry for my throat it is infected that is the reason my voice is not that much clear no problem for all yesterday we were talking about the best practices we are not able to go into it actually and can yes, you know, is it downloadable the problem is uh, with the uh, best practices server itself because yesterday even i was struggling right yes i tried it even just now during the class i am not able to go in actually maybe it is still not working so you need to yeah, try it yeah. later okay and we are able to download from there the word document is it because even i thought you can show us how, what are those you were saying like uh, the test scripts and all available there yes. i am showing you the same thing only so yeah, sure. if you can see my screen now the i have this downloaded copies of this documents but these are related to 1709 version 1611 from cloud so i think 1710 or 1610 documentation i already downloaded but you can always get the updated version in the link that i have shown you yesterday right so this is a kind of documentation this is a kind of test script that you will be getting from the best practices so just for example whenever you are going for the accounts payable session whenever you are going for the accounts payable workshop what are the activities that you are going to carry out in that particular workshop so the complete list is provided in this document right so first of all let's try to understand this document in detail this is a very important document that you will need whenever you are performing the explore phase see this kind of manuals or this kind of materials they are not available in case of asset methodology because in asset methodology we were never supposed to touch the system during the business blueprint phase in the business blueprint whatever were the discussions with the customer those discussions were all in theory there was no system at all okay even if some of you might have used the system of some sandbox system or maybe you have shown some others customer system that as you are done from your side but it was never mentioned in asset methodology right so asset methodology never says to show the system to the client during the business blueprint phase but now in the explore phase we are going to carry out all this best practice documentations we are going to show this all these things to the customer in the workshops okay so let me try to explain you little bit in detail about this document okay so what is the purpose of this document this this document is trying to show you what are the activities that you do normally in accounts payables so it will give you each and everything right right from creation of the vendor to how to create a invoice how to make a payment how to make the automatic payment how to make the down payment how to see the reports okay how to carry the uh, uh, period and activity related to accounts payables everything is mentioned in this document so you will be able to show them entire end to end process this is how accounts payables works in sap as for hana and let them come and tell you whether this is fitting their business requirements or not if not you will highlight as a gap if fit you will just write that yes this particular uh, process is fitting the business requirements so no need to do anything on to it just you will configure the standard based practices in the customer system and you are done right if you come down if you remember i told you yesterday if you want to work on sap fiori 
you need to know what are the different roles that I need to provide to my end user. So now within accounts payables, there are different kind of users, right? So there will be accounts payable accountant. There will be accounts payable accountant from the procurement point of view, which means for Miro transactions. Then you have customer master people who will be creating the customer and vendor master data. Accounts payable manager. Manager is not going to do the transaction. Only going to see the reports. Uh, may I request all of you to mute yourself? There is some background noise. Yeah, thank you. Then you have cash management specialist who will be uh, managing the bank accounts, who will be receiving the payments. Okay, so that is cash management. Then there is a general ledger account, maybe from the reporting point of view or from the reconciliation point of view. And then there is the administrator. Administrator means kind of configuration related activities. So these are the different roles based on who is the user who will decide whether he's an accountant or he's a manager and accordingly you will provide the role to that particular end user. Okay, if you come down, I told you SAP already provides you the data. You don't need to worry about setting up your company code, purchasing org, and then only you'll be able to show the system to the client. No, you don't need to start from there. Okay, normally we do that. Today, if I'm following SAP methodology, although I'm not supposed to show any system to the client, but to simplify my process, there are many instances where we set up some kind of sandbox for the uh, customer and we show them this is how SAP works. But here you don't need to do that because SAP has provided this sample company codes. Okay, so which company code to use, which controlling area to use, which cost center to use, even master data, house bank, accounts, everything is provided. You just need to go in front of the customer, open a particular app and enter these details. Okay, you don't need to set up all these things in advance. They are already pre-delivered by SAP. Okay, if you still go down, then it will start with the actual process. So let's go to the actual process. These are all the prerequisites and then the actual process will start. So actual process is starting from here. First is complete the supplier master data. So how are you going to maintain the supplier master data? End to end process is available here. See, complete the master data. So how are you going to do that? So log on to SAP Fiori Launchpad as an accounts payable accountant or as a customer master specialist. So only those users who are assigned to this uh, roles only those users will be able to see this transaction called as maintain business partner. Because in S4HANA, if you want to create a vendor, it has to be created as a business partner. So this is an app which will allow you to create a business partner, right? If you open this app, you can see even system is giving you the default business partner, which is already created so that you can show it to the customer that yes, see how this is created in the system, how this business partner is created in the system. What are the things that we have mentioned? What is the accounting clerk? What is the email address? So all those things you can show it to the customer. What are the different payment methods? What are the different payment terms? So here you will try to understand if there is any additional payment method required or if there is any additional payment term required which are not already delivered by SAP. Right, so this is called a speed cap which payment term is fitting the requirements, which payment methods we need to create it separately. So those are you are trying to identify what is not already available within the system. Even the account groups, when you are creating the vendor master, you can show them that whenever you create a vendor master system, will ask you the account group. So by default, SAP has provided the domestic account group, foreign account group, internal company account group. Do you have any additional requirement of the account groups? You will identify there, you will note down, and that will become kind of the business blueprint document where you already know that okay apart from the standard account groups which are already pre-delivered by sap we need to create this many more number of account groups okay so like this it is provided for all the processes within ap so whenever you are having the ap session you will be showing this document whenever you are having the gl you will be showing a particular document. Whenever you are conducting the workshop on AR, you will be showing the AR document. So like this, 
you don't need to worry about setting up the enterprise structure everything is pre delivered you just need to carry out this entire test script not only this test script will help you in the initial fit gap analysis workshop yesterday i told you this is a very good template for creation of user manuals this is a very good template which is for the test script this is already the test script you don't need to make any change right so here user will go during the time of uat he will try to carry out this process and he will be writing here his comments whether it is fitting if it fits the requirement you will write pass if there is anything wrong you will write fail and you can comment also if you want to see anything else so you don't need to waste your time in creating the templates for the end user manual creating the templates for the uh, uat document all these things can be directly used so sap activate with best practices it is providing you lot of templates which can be directly used in the project so that you are doing more productive activities during the project rather than worrying about all these templates okay so you can get these templates very easily from the best practice documentation okay so this is the first task that you, that you will do now let's again go back to our ppt so we discussed what are the activities that you will be doing in the explore phase so you will be doing the validation workshop by showing the test scripts once this fit gap workshop is completed then you are going to perform the actual realization so that is realize realization phase is realize in sap activate realize again has one difference compared to sap sf this realization you are going to do with the scrum methodology any idea what is scrum how scrum is different than the normal development or maybe can you tell me what was the issue that we identified in the realization phase in sap methodology what was the problem for two months your users are not involved at all right users are not involved in your development process at all let me give you one example forget about sap let's say you are uh, you got your new home for which you want to uh, set up the furniture okay so you are a customer because it is your home you want to decide how you want to see your furniture where you want to see your bed where you want to see your wardrobe what is the design of the wardrobe that you need what is the design of bed that you need right you are a customer and you invited carpenters so that they can tell you how exactly they are going to develop it for you so carpenter has just shown you the photos he has just shown you the photos that okay we will do it like here uh, this will be the design this will be the design uh, for the bed this will be the design for the wardrobe okay and you agreed on some design and for 3 months when he was creating this bed and uh, when he was actually constructing these things at that time you were not available in the place at all after 3 months when you came and when you seen your home you are not happy at all why because in the photo it was looking different and actually it is looking different so what is the solution here what could have been done to avoid the situation what you normally do when you do any of uh, activities whenever you are uh, developing your home at that time what exactly is your approach you normally visit regularly right on day to day basis to check what is happening if there is anything wrong you can tell here itself that known what you are developing is wrong i don't want like this maybe in the photo it was looking good but now i want to change my requirement i want to do this so at least you can save the time you can save the time of the carpenter also ultimately carpenter's time is your time because after 3 months if you come and tell no i don't want this again the rework and again it will take more time right so what is a better approach is in scrum we are involving the customers on day to day basis we are taking regular feedbacks we are telling them we are showing them whatever has been developed instead of showing everything after 3 months we need to show them whatever you have done on day to day basis 
and if they have any feedbacks if they want anything to be changed it is too early you can customers can tell you there itself which means you can save a lot of time right so in realize phase you are going to follow scrum and using the scrum what is the benefit involve your users on day to day basis for what for regular feedbacks and changes if any so if you know the changes here itself you can save a lot of time instead of completely developing it and then customer says no 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 what you have developed i was not expecting this see this is very common in case of sap we develop everything we take 3 4 months and after that when you do the uat everything is like many many types of errors many types of unexpected thing occurs where customer is not happy and you need to do the rework so that can be avoided when you involve your user on day to day basis right so this is realize after realization there is deployment phase this is kind of final preparation where carry out your uat where you carry out your in this there is not much difference whatever you were doing in case of final preparation most of the things are same so deploy you can consider it same as of what you are doing in the final preparation okay after the deploy the last one is run run means go live and support so you start using the system run means start using the system and keep on improving the system okay improving means you already started running on the system but there are still some functionalities which you want to keep on adding on day to day basis okay so keep on improving the system this is a run phase so it starts with prepare in the prepare you carry out all those project management related activities and here also for the project manager sap has provided lot of templates so to create a project plan to create a kick off meeting agenda the pptts are provided to uh, even to uh, give the presentations to the customer sap has provided the powerpoint presentations on how agile works how scrum works so those templates are pre delivered by sap so it is supporting the project manager also a lot in order to carry out the activities in the much uh, structured manner right so here in the prepare phase or over you over the entire project the project manager will be involved in entire project so for him there are a lot of pmp related templates which are pre delivered by sap which will make the life easy not only for the consultants but also for the project managers right so prepare activity in the explore instead of understanding as is to be we will be conducting validation workshops which are also called as fit gap workshops where we'll be showing the best practices to the client we'll be understanding the requirements if there is any deviation customer has to raise we will take care of that as a gap if everything is fit then no need to worry customer can implement the system as it is okay in the realize we will involve our customers on day to day basis so that there is no uh, there are no surprises later on during the uat if there is any change you can know it during the development itself then you have the deploy and finally you have the run any questions on this have you understood what are the different phases in sap activate so prepare explore realize deploy and then run okay and even before this these are the phases when you start the project but if a customer has still not started the project then what exactly he is doing forget about customer what exactly we are doing currently why are you here what exactly you are doing in this session learning learning right learning means what you are trying to discover what is new in s4hana what is new in s4hana compared to ecc or what is there in s4 hana for the new customer it is not what is new for the new customer wants to discover 
what is sap as for how it will help me in my company so that is called as discover there is a discover phase also which is before the actual project starts discover means understanding what is sap as for how so for this sap has provided a lot of links to learn what is as for how even links not only links sap has also provided the trial cloud version trial cloud system okay for the customers so if a customer wants to know how exactly the look and feel of sap looks like even before purchase even before he goes for the project he can go for the trial cloud edition and he can be able to perform some of the transactions without buying the system so that he can see how exactly sap system looks like Is it clear now? What are the different phases in SAP Activate? Now the question comes. We understood that there are five phases in SAP Activate, but if we want the details, if we want to see each and every activity in detail, like what are the activities within the prepare phase, how to carry out those activities, what are the templates provided by SAP? Okay, what are the documents provided by SAP to learn? more things on the prepare just remember one very important link okay let me show you that link so what you will do is sap activate road map viewer okay don't worry i will be uh, in my ppt which i am going to share today i will send you all these links okay so you don't need to every time go to google you can just click on that link and it will open this so roadmap viewer is one of the place where sap has a lot of content on sap activate okay just like sap fiori apps library yesterday we have seen just like base practices explorer we have seen similarly for methodology you will go to sap activate roadmap viewer Okay, so no need to sign here. You just click on no access uh, without signing in, or you can sign in also. That will not make any difference in case of activate. Okay, so here there are multiple folders. I'll go to the solution specific folder. Okay, go to the solution specific, and you can see SAP activate for different products from SAP. So our methodology, we want to see the methodology for on-premise system. So if you are not able to see here, click on this button. It will take you to the right side. Just search for SAP Activate for on-premise. This one. Transition to SAP S4 HANA on-premise. So this is the methodology. It will tell you how to move to S4 HANA if you are coming from the new implementation, or you want to convert your existing system, or you want to go for the central finance option. what are the activities that you need to carry out whenever you are working on the project okay so this road map is intended to guide the implementation team through transition to sap s4 hana okay so it consists of different phases it consists of different deliverables it consists of different task that you need to follow in sap activate methodology and it comes covers all implementation scenarios what are the different implementation scenarios this three you can go for new implementation you can go for upgradation or you can go for the central finance right so if you click on content it will give the complete list of phases and in each and every phase there are some deliverables there are some templates there are some uh task that you need to carry out so just take example of discover what we normally do in the discover number 1 for the company not for us as a consultant strategic planning for the companies if the companies wants to go for sap s for hana first of all they have to do the planning like why exactly we need sap system or why not go for any other system so those kind of planning will be done in the strategic way then what is provided by sap then you have the scoping before you decide which product to go for 
whether to go for SAP or to go for Oracle or you go for Tally. You need to understand what are the features that I'm looking for as a customer, right? So even SAP provides that level of information for the customer, which will help them in taking the decision. What are the different things that you are looking for in the ERP and what are the things are available in SAP? Okay, and including trial system provision. So if you click on this as a customer, if a customer wants a trial system so that he can get a look and feel of the system, he can click on this button and it will take you to the SAP trial page, fully activated appliance. Okay, this is, although this is trial, this is not the real time system, but it is chargeable to the customer. Okay, it is not chargeable like uh, the normal licensing, it is very uh, reasonable charge because it is available on cloud. So the cloud, whether it is AWS or Azure, they will definitely charge you if you want to go for this. But the customers will not find it very costly. If a customer is really interested to see what is there in S4 HANA, they will definitely go and buy this license. Okay, so this is for Discover. This is for the customers to identify what I will get if I go for S4 HANA. Okay, and then if a customer has decided, yes, I want to go for S4 HANA, then it starts with the prepare, explore, realize, deploy, and run. So what are the activities that we need to carry out in the prepare phase? We need to decide the team. Okay, we may need to do the prototype to show the customer what exactly we are going to deliver. Transition planning, how are we going to plan the transition? How are we going to start the project? How are we going to plan the project? So these are all the activities which are mainly relevant to project manager. And as I told you for each and every activity, SAP has provided a lot of content. Okay, so for example, project team enablement, which means once your team is finalized, you need to explain that, see this project, we are not following SAP methodology. We are going to follow SAP Activate methodology. And since we are following SAP Activate, there are some roles and responsibilities of each and every person who is working on this project. So what are the activities that you need to perform on day-to-day -day basis on the project? How are you going to follow the Agile methodology? Your project manager will need to give the training on that. And if he is giving the training, definitely we cannot expect that he will create a PPTs on his own. Again, it is it will take a lot of time for him to give him the training. So what can be done is SAP has provided a lot of templates. Okay, so if you come down, there are some accelerators. If you click on this, it will show you a lot of accelerators. Accelerators means the activities which will help you in completing your project faster. So whatever are the unproductive activities, SAP has provided the PPTs for that. You don't need to worry about creation of PPTs. Okay, just for example, if I go for prepare phase, and if I want to do the agile concept presentation to the customer or to the team, how exactly is agile working? What are the different things in agile? So you can see it will open the PPT for you. Let me open this in. Just give me a minute. Open it. Okay, so these are the kind of documentations which are provided by SAP which will make your life simpler. See, all these documentations I'm not seeing in ECC, documentations are not available from SAP, but there was no common place where we can go and we can search for the documents. With this SAP Activate, all the documentations are available at one single place. That is a good idea. So you talk about a particular process, you will get all the relevant documentations available there. Right, so how the project management methodology, agile project management methodology is different. So you can see, you can give this uh, training to the team. You can always explain to the customer, how are we going to follow the agile project in this particular implementation project, right? So what are the, uh, what are the benefits of going for agile? How agile will work? Okay, what are the different phases in SAP Activate? Just now we discussed prepare, explore, realize, deploy, and run. What are the activities that we are going to carry out in each and every phase? Okay, so all those things are very properly explained 
in this documentation. So you never need to worry about creation of templates, uh, designing the things, all the things are pre-delivered. You just concentrate on understanding the requirements, understanding the fits, understanding the gaps, make the note of it, and then start directly on the system. So on an average, with all these contents which are provided by SAP, you can easily save around 50% of the time in the projects. The ultimate goal of SAP Activate is to reduce the time required to implement SAP. So irrespective of whether you are implementing SAP for the first time or you are upgrading, with these new tools, with this new methodology, you can save a lot of unproductive time. Okay, so I just wanted to show you. Please save the path of this website right now. Yes, you just go to Google and just write SAP Activate Roadmap Weaver. SAP. SAP Activate Roadmap Weaver. Okay. Let me show you once again. So if you go to Google, I will make sure that this uh, link is provided to you in your PPT. But you need to write this SAP Activate Roadmap Weaver. Okay. Okay, so what we were doing, so let's go back to our slide. Not this one. Not even this one. In this one. Yes. So as I told you the content, so I will make sure it here itself, let's enter it here. So we have to access the content of SAP Activate. How to access Activate content? So number one, SAP Activate methodology. Methodology you will be able to access via SAP Activate Roadmap Weaver. Okay, and the link is this one. Similarly, if you want to go for the SAP Best Practices Explorer, okay, where you'll be getting all these necessary uh, test scripts. Okay, so for that, you will go to, again, just go and write Best Practice Explorer in Google. So SAP Best Practice Explorer. Okay, any, anything is fine, but I'm going with this. It is rapid.sap.com website. Okay, so even this is enough. If you go there, then you'll be able to see various different options. So you have to select SAP S4 HANA on premise. So this is a website which will allow you to get the base practices documentation for on premise system. Similarly, in the same site, you have the option of cloud also. If you want to go for cloud based practices, in the same site, you'll be able to select a cloud. Let me show you. So once this is open, you can see currently we are looking at base practices on premise. Let's close it. Okay, and if you want to change it, you can go to the home page. And here, it will give all the options. So if you want to go for cloud, so base practices for as for HANA cloud. Okay, so this will give you the cloud edition. Within cloud, you have to select which version you want to go for. As I told you, there is no option of selecting of version in case of cloud because cloud customers are always using the latest version. We discussed it already. Cloud customers, they don't have the choice. They will be al always using the latest version. In case of on-premise, there can be a customer who is using 1610, who is using 1709, 
but in case of cloud the latest version is only applicable for all the customers right so this is a place where you can go and you can find the necessary documentation related to best practices so now you understood the concept of methodology and best practice so what is sap activate sap activate consists of the methodology which you can find in sap activate roadmap viewer which has five or six phases okay if you include discover then six phases if you don't include discover then five phases then the best practice explorer where you'll be able to download whatever test scripts are available and the last one that we need to understand is guided configuration guided configuration means simple thing guided configuration means configurations using sap fiori as i told you if you are implementing as for hana cloud you don't have spro access so all the configurations you have to do via fiori okay let me show you so if i go to the server let's close this so let me see you yeah so if you go to the system or maybe if it is already open let me open the fiori screen yes so this is a fiori screen right let's go to the home page yesterday we already understood how to access a fiori so you need to uh, keep this under your favorites or maybe you can go to traditional gui and try transaction slash ui2 slash flp okay so in this one if i go to fiori launchpad admin group i'm able to see uh, i'm not able to see anything related to configuration right you can see i'm not able to see anything related to configuration why because i am only assigned to this roles only related to accounts payable that to only analytics but if i want to see the configuration related to accounts payables so just now i shown you if you go to the system or if you go to the test okay so this is a test script what is the role that i need in order to perform the accounts payable configuration let's go to the role section so roles are available here so for configuration which is a role i think this one let's try sap underscore no i i don't think this is related to configuration is there anything related to configuration here no let's do one thing where can i go and find the role which is related to configuration simply go to sap fiori apps library okay open sap fiori apps library here and you just tell the system what exactly you are looking for so i'm looking for the configuration related to accounts payables so if i just write accounts payables yeah application configuration for accounts payable report but this is for china so this is only country specific maybe ap or something let's see which one accounts payables or let's directly write the config whatever way you want to search okay let's, let's talk about this itself manage chart of accounts so this is the configuration right if i come down let's see any other configuration is there automatic account determination okay this is nothing but obyc so, so let's see this if i want to do the obyc setting from fiori right 
So in that case, I need a role. Which role I should assign to my user ID? So I'll go to implementation information. Okay, under the configuration. And these are the roles. This is a role. There is only one role. If I assign this role to my user ID, then I'll be able to configure the uh, accounts from my Fiori screen itself. So I'll copy this, I'll go to the system. And I will assign myself this particular role in transaction SU01. Okay, so now if I go to my Fiori screen and just refresh it, I should be able to see one new group, okay, which is related to the configuration. One new group would be added. You can see there is a new group added, accountant overview for general nature. Let's open this group. It is giving me the option of, sorry, there are multiple groups. So journal entries, periodic, let's see where is the configuration related thing. Uh, it is not showing configuration relevant, let's see. Journal entry, periodic activity, analytical. In which group it will come? So again, go to Fiori apps library and see which group. General ledger configuration. That configuration doesn't appear here. Maybe someone has played with the standard role. Okay, let's see one by one. What is the app name? App name is. Your voice is going on and off, very low, and then coming up, uh, Mr. Gaurav. Uh, is it okay now? Yeah, it's okay now. Yeah, sorry, my mic is a little bit here or there. So, account determination. We need to talk about the account determination here. Is it available here? No. No. Okay, so this is, you can see this is also configuration, right? Forget about that particular one that we are looking for, but this is also configuration, manage chart of accounts. So instead of using SPRO to manage the chart of account, I can also use SAP Fiori. Right, what will happen here now is, once I open this manage chart of accounts, I'll be able to manage my chart of account list from the Fiori itself. So this is one example of the configuration that you can do using SAP Fiori, right? So you can see this is a list of the different chart of accounts. Sorry, this is a list of different financial statement versions, and this is a list of different chart of accounts. Okay, so what options I have here? Is it allowing me to create new one? It totally depends upon which app I'm using. So some app will allow you to create new, some app will only allow you to change the existing one. Let's try to use this. Okay, and let's see what exactly it is allowing. So this app is only allowing you to assign a particular GL account to the financial statement version. Okay, so don't worry about the app now, just understand the concept. The concept is instead of using SPRO to perform the configuration, whatever configuration it is, whether it is a creation of chart of account or assigning the GL accounts to the OBYC settings or global parameters for company code, you are not using SPRO, you are using SAP Fiori. Now, this is on-premise system. What I am using is on-premise system. So I can easily go to SPRO also to do my configurations. Okay, but when it comes to the cloud, in cloud, there is only option of Fiori to do your configurations. And understand one thing, why it is called as guided configuration, why it is not called as new user interface configuration or Fiori configuration or whatever new thing. Guided means it is guided, which means you can see this. If I take this example, I think account determination was the best example. I don't know why it is not showing. Maybe we will see in the next class, but account determination, it is not just like what you were having in OBYC settings. It is much more simplified. Okay, so even the new user, 
who don't know how OBYC settings works in the background, he can also go to this new app and he can configure it very easily. Right, so guided means these, it is just not the copy of OBYC. It is a simplified version of OBYC. That is the reason it is called as guided configuration. So initially, when this guided configuration terminology came in place in case of 1511 and 1610, this guided configuration was only available on cloud. Okay, but nowadays what is happening with every new version? Now we are in 1909. So there are few apps which can be configured using Fiori, but there are a lot of things even today on premise which are dependent on SPRO, where there is no corresponding Fiori app available for configuration. So simply what we normally follow in case of on-premise, we still use SPRO. Okay, if the option is available, we still continue to use SPRO, but going forward, if SAP is saying no, everything should be done through Fiori, then you will be using the guided configuration apps from Fiori. In case of cloud, as I told you, the only option is guided configuration. There is no more option to do the configuration using SPRO. Configuration using SPRO in cloud can only be done by the SAP itself. SAP can still use in the background SPRO, but for the customers, SPRO is not available. They can only change their individual processes using the guided configuration based on Fiori. Okay, so that is SAP Activate for you, which has three pillars. Number one is methodology, which is improved. Why it is improved? It takes Agile into principle, it takes Scrum into principle, and it tries to reduce the unnecessary, unproductive activities. It tries to eliminate the unproductive activities, like as is process. Even in the realization phase, we are trying to involve customer on day-to-day -day basis, regular meetings, standout meetings to get the feedback and make the necessary adjustments there itself, right? So ultimate goal of the methodology is to reduce the timeline. With the methodology, SAP provides a lot of best practice templates, which can be directly used instead of wasting your time in creating the documentations. Most of the documentations you can take as a template and then you can make necessary changes. So you don't need to start from scratch. So that is best practices. In best practices, also SAP provides the test scripts, okay, which means even if you are new to s hana you can easily uh, if, if you are given the demo system with the base practices installed, you can run the entire end-to-end -end process without any problem. Okay, no need to do configuration, no need to create any master data. Just use whatever is mentioned in the document, go to that particular app, enter the details, whatever are mentioned, and click on save. Okay, so that is something which is very good. Otherwise, for the consultant, it will become very difficult to first get trained on all those things and then try to explain to the customer. Right. Then the last one is guided configuration, which means using SAP Fiori, you can perform the configuration. Uh, in case of on-premise, you have still the option of SPRO and the uh, Fiori-based configuration, but in case of cloud, just remember there is no SPRO. SPRO is only available with SAP. For the customers, they can only adjust their configurations using the Fiori apps. Okay, content, we also discussed about the content, where exactly you will be able to get the content. So if you want to see the details of SAP Activate methodology, what are the different phases, what are the activities within the phases, you can go to this screen. And if you want to know the best practices, as I told you, today, uh, someone said, even yesterday we tried, it was not working, but please make sure whenever it is working, just download as I have done for 1610. Okay, so, I don't want to share this file with you because these are older ones. These are related to 1610. What you can do is once the, the server starts working, whatever test scripts are related to finance mm -hmm. and which you think are helpful in your project, download it and keep it safe. Don't wait that whenever I need, I will go to the SAP site and download. Many times when it is urgent, you will go to the site and site is not responding, right? So it is always better to keep this downloaded version in your PC or in your Google Drive. Okay, any questions before we close today?
आई एव रीड समेर की एस ए पी फ्यूरी नॉट प्रोवाइड द कम्प्लीट कंफिग्रेशन ऑप्शन exactly so as i told you in case of on premise in case of on premise sap will not provide you the complete configuration that is the reason we are still preferring to use spro in case of cloud in case of cloud also we are not saying that all the configurations are available on fiori only those configurations which customers are allowed to do on their own only that configuration is available on fiori because the background configuration what needs to be done by sap they can still use spr yeah okay okay anything else any other questions related to sap activate or any of the previous sessions that we had there is minor confusion on a uh, fiori related query group and uh, uh, roles and other thing is catalog uh, as i as per my understanding uh, if you assign the role and catalog to the role then only user will can access the uh, uh, apps in his login id uh, yeah. so uh, and you. and uh, uh, group, group is a combination of catalog Just, I mean, both are basically both have uh, its own apps. Let me let me show you. So Fiori uh, rules or Fiori authorization. How Fiori authorization works? Okay. So first of all, user would be assigned to role, right? This role consists of catalogs. and direct groups within the catalog sorry within the role you can have the catalogs and you can have the groups okay within the catalog if i talk about the catalog okay so this group is optional this group can directly be assigned in role or only the catalogs are assigned to the role within the catalogs you have the groups and within the groups you have apps so where is the confusion mahesh i think uh, within the group we assign the catalog no 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 it is other way around okay groups multiple groups consist of one catalog one catalog can have multiple groups but within the group we cannot have multiple catalogs Okay. I will I will show you one scenario mm -hmm. because see 1809 it was working in the different way now yesterday when we opened the catalog there was some confusion that is the reason I was not able to show you but in catalog till 1809 I can show you within a catalog you have different groups assigned and within the groups you can have different apps that we already seen yesterday right within a group there are different apps within a role there are different groups and catalogs but only confusion is in catalog why you are not able to see the groups in 1909 so that one i will show you but i am 100% clear user is assigned to the role role is assigned to the catalog catalog is assigned to the group and group is assigned to apps even this question is asked multiple times in the exam even if you go through the certification pdfs i'll i'll share the pdfs also immediately uh, maybe in another one or two days with you even if you go through those pdfs it's very clearly okay in catalog uh, uh, there is matlab in catalog we assign group in group there is a app right and matlab uh, then we assign catalog and group to the role no exactly yes okay. if we will not assign group in role then it will be not display if it end no if we don't assign the groups to the role then if you assign the catalog and in, if catalog consist of groups then those groups will be considered okay in the role you can directly assign the catalog or you can assign the group so if you are not assigning group if you are assigning the catalog in this catalog whatever number of groups are available that will come into picture okay okay i read yesterday na no, something if uh, anything is uh, apps is up, uh, available in group and something is available in uh, catalog 
if both are available in let's suppose t1 is available in catalog and t1 and t2 is available in the group then mm -hmm. we need if you will assign the catalog and group only t1 will be visible to the user no no can you can you come again let's go catalog uh, let's go catalog in catalog t1 is the uh, any apps is assigning catalog catalog one has t1 right uh, and group has t2 t2 and t3 t1 has t2 okay uh, what next? So in row, let's, what suppose, you are assigning? Huh. let's suppose we will a catalog we assign. In that case, the catalog. only catalog. And then uh, in the user, user can view the uh, T1 apps. Yes. So if catalog is assigned, in the catalog, if you have the app, then this will be available to the user. But in this catalog, are there any groups or only the app? Only the app. Yeah, only the app, then only this will be available. See, okay. if I say in catalog, I have the app plus I have the group. Right? Mm -hmm. Then what will happen is in the role, if I assign C1, then T1 will come and from G1, T2 will also come. So the user will be able to see T1 plus T2. But if this catalog is not having any group, then whatever apps are assigned, that will be available in the role. Okay. Clear. Is it possible to uh, assign a app into the catalog directly? Yes, yes, yes. Even in the role, even in the role. See, it is for the simplification purpose that instead of assigning single, single app to the role, we can combine them into the catalogs and groups, but all these things can directly be assigned to the role also. Even in ECC, okay. in the role, I can directly assign the transaction code, right? Yes, that is possible. Or even to the user, uh, I think to the user also, we can directly assign the transaction code. It is possible. Let's see. So if you go to the user master, even if I don't assign the role, I think transaction code also can be given. Let's try user and then roles can i assign the transaction code directly here no it is only possible through the role right yes i i don't think it is directly possible i cannot assign the transaction code directly to the user it has to be always through role but within the role i can have a catalog or i can have a in this menu i can have the catalog or I can have the uh, app directly or I can also have the group. So within the role, I can create a catalog, I can create a group or I can create a app directly. Okay. Okay. Gaurav, I think we have left it at option options. Oh, no, we, are not, we, we will talk, we will talk. Don't worry about that. So adoption options will come multiple times during the course. Oh, okay. Next session onwards, we are going to start our first adoption option, right? That is new implementation. Okay, anything else before we close today? So okay, compared to ECC, not... yes, yes, sorry. Yeah, compared Please to work. ECC, S4 HANA will be implemented uh, sooner, right? If you see, uh, in ECC also, normally we say we are following SF methodology, but I can give you many examples where we were deviating from SF methodology, right? Yes. So even in S4 HANA, if you are just saying we are following SAP Activate, but internally within the project, we are just saying it for the namesake and we are doing all those activities which we were doing earlier, right? Then there is no guarantee that you will take less time or more time. According to SAP, if you follow Activate properly, if you go with the agile based way, if you go with the scrum based way, if you carry out these workshops properly, if it should not happen that you are carrying the workshop, but you are not making the notes then again, you need to have multiple workshops to finalize the requirements, right? 
So yes. if you follow SAP Activate properly, the reason why SAP came up with SAP Activate because SAP wanted to make sure that it is not taking much time to uh, implement SAP S4 HANA system. Okay, so customers are not ready to wait for one year, two year, three years to implement. They they are saying if you are investing today, we should be able to deploy SAP soon. We should not wait for years to implement SAP system. That is the reason they came up with this option. But again, it totally depends upon the team how exactly they are carrying out the project. So no one is following Activate hundred percent up to hundred percent. No, no, no. Even today, many companies I have seen, uh, they are just saying SAP activate, but once you enter into the project, nobody is aware what exactly is that. Okay, so even SAP, see, I am not saying SAP activate. Even SAP methodology, from years we are saying we are following SAP, 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 but if you go to the project, nobody cares what we are doing, right? I give you a simple example. Uh, you are showing the system to the client, demo system to the client. Is it mentioned in the SAP methodology? No. During the blueprint phase? Although I'm not saying it is good or bad. I'm just giving you the example. Methodology is one thing and what we are following is other thing. Yes, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Hi, hi Vikram. Uh, I just want to know what topics would we be covering next week? Next week we'll be starting with uh, the fresh implementation where we'll be starting with uh, creation of uh, company code, the enterprise structure where there is not much change, but mm -hmm. that will be only 15 minutes and then we will be coming to most important topics like uh, ledgers, document types, whatever has been changed in S4 HANA. Okay. And then so we'll uh, from the enterprise structure point of view. Okay, and then the steps for migration of S4 that would we be covering that later. That is the last topic. So first okay. project mm -hmm. we are going to see is new implementation. Okay. So within the implementation, we will understand the changes in GL, mm -hmm. uh, in AP, in AR, in bank accounting, in asset accounting, in COPA. Okay. If you complete that, then the next part would be system conversion. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay, thank you. I just want to, uh, I just want to let you know. I, I really like your sessions. You explain all these, you know, methodology and everything, which is, you know, which is not something you find in every training. They just directly dump into, just directly jump into configuration. So yeah, I really appreciate you explaining everything in detail. Thank you for thank that. You. Okay, so let's close today and next session would be on next Saturday. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank you, Gaurav. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.